Hello, this is Area Gloria. Do you want to master aiming guns and rockets in the Mi-24P? Well, this video is about the Hind CCIP, especially focusing on its two or three errors that you will experience with it and how to get the most accuracy out of it. In DCS, we can experience what a huge difference this makes for air to ground warfare to have CCIP, making it so you have a death dock and you just need to put the thing on the thing and shoot. In the late 1960s, Mill wasn't given enough time and money to create all the unique equipment that he envisioned for the Mi-24. And so the CCIP it does get, like many things on the hind, are from other aircraft. In this case, the ASP-17V site adapted from the Su-17 and MiG-23 that many DCS players will be familiar with from the Su-25. The CCIP site only works for the inbuilt gun, the Yak-B, and the S-5 and S-8 series rockets. You get CCIP if you select the 7.62mm GISH minigun, but it's just using the Yak-B ballistics, and thus will undershoot. For S-13 and S-24 rockets, the ADSVU ballistics computer is only using S8 ballistics. It gets these ballistics from specific cards, and the ground crew just leave the S8 card in as cards for the S13 and S24 were never developed. To understand the errors of the CCAP and to aim more accurately, we need to understand how it works. The ADS-VU analog digital computer uses the so-called range elevation method, where the radar altimeter height and the angle of dive are used to find the hypotenuse and thus calculate range to target. However, to correct for many other factors in the trajectory of a weapon, the ADS-VU computer was cleverly designed to also use the Doppler system to provide wind speeds, the air data system to provide airspeed and barometric pressure, and the precision airflow vanes provide angle of attack and angle of slip data to allow near perfect estimation of drift, which is really the only reason we have this spike on the front. However, there are three chief inaccuracies of the system. One, since the radar altimeter is essential for automatic range finding, any inaccuracy of it also affects the CCIP. 1A. Most of you will be familiar with this one, the fact that by using the radar altimeter, it doesn't know target height, so the computer has to assume that all ground is flat. If the ground your radar altimeter sees is above the target, you will need to also aim above the target. If the ground your radar altimeter sees is below the target, you will need to also aim below the target. 1B. After 15 to 20 degrees pitch or roll, the readings are overestimated since the radar beam is only about 30 degrees wide. So if you need to fire past a 15 to 20 degree dive, the pipper will be too low as the distance calculated will be farther than the actual distance. Two, the parameters that determine the CCIP solution were mentioned. However, the pitch angle used is not the angle of the helicopter boresight plus pipper, but boresight only. This means that the farther the pipper is from the bore site, the greater the error in the range calculated. In the case that the pipper is below the bore site, the bore site points at a spot on the ground much further away than where the pipper points. And thus, the range calculated will be too long, the pipper too low, and the rounds will fly above the target. This means that weapons with flatter trajectories will be more accurate at longer ranges. And while you have the opposite issue 
if the pipper is above boresight. This usually occurs at such low ranges that the error is really not worth caring about. Three, this one is really optional and is by far the smallest factor. There is a settling time to get the most accurate solution of about one to two seconds for the CCIP site. But in my experience, keeping the pipper on target for just one second is usually plenty. Additionally, someday ED might add the sync mode where the pipper will have gyro site logic applied. This will mean that if you can follow a moving target well enough, it will automatically calculate lead. Maybe in two weeks? You also have a manual range input dial if you think your errors will be so big. However, I find that my main use for this manual range mode is when my radar altimeter is shot out. I like to set my manual range to one kilometer to help give me a rough estimate of weapon drift at close range. Or you can use the base range to do stadium metric range finding. The computer helps here since whether you're using auto or manual range input, you don't need to worry about distance. Just dial in the width or the height of the target and the computer will automatically vary the gap in the pipper according to the range. Basically, if I want to attack an average sized vehicle, six to seven meters in length, I just dial in seven meters and the gap will automatically show that distance at any range within the limits of the site. To recap for CCAP, one, Radar altimeter sees ground above the target, aim above it. Radar altimeter sees ground below the target, aim below it. More than a 15 or 20 degree dive, you might need to shoot below the target. And when the pipper is below bore sight at long range, you might need to also aim below the target. And for best results, have the pipper on or near the target for one to two seconds for highest accuracy. And you can use the manual range dial in degraded conditions, such as having a radar altimeter shot up. Thank you for watching. I really hope uh, this helps you become more accurate in your shooting and destroy and kill more things. And see you next time.